Hello everyone, it's Jeannie Peters here from the Real Food Culinary Boot Camp on Sunday evening. Just wrapping up the weekend and I'm here um, getting ready to make the Tuscan kale salad and I wanted to just show you um, one last idea before this week ends on how you can incorporate some vegetables into your diet before we kick off week number two, which is all going to be looking at how to incorporate more starchy carbohydrates from beans, starchy vegetables, legumes, um, and how to go ahead and uh, prepare them in the proper way so that you're getting the most nutrition out of them. So right now I'm soaking up some white beans. I've got some millet that's soaking right now. And later on this week I'm going to be showing you um, how to make some cultured vegetables, uh, which is just a fabulous way to be able to go and incorporate more vegetables into your diet. But for now I want to show you this Tuscan kale salad in which I'm using Lacinto kale. And for those of you who have never tried this, this one almost looks, sometimes it's referred to as like a dinosaur kale. It's got kind of a bumpy, firm texture. And this is great for those of you that really don't like that strong, bitter taste that you get with like the traditional kale. And this is an easy one. It usually comes clumped like this. I bought a big, you know, uh, amount of it at the farmer's market. And the way that you're going to go ahead and, and prepare this is you just take the end and peel off and then literally just strip it down. So let me just do that for you again. You just take a little piece at the end and start to peel it off and then just literally just push it right down with your finger and you'll peel off most of the firm core and that way we're able to get you know really just the, the meat of the kale. So I'm going to do a couple more of those and then I'll just show you what we're going to do. And this goes really fast. And those little stems that you have, if you're a gardener, you know, or if you compost, that can go straight into your compost. But honestly, if you're not, that kind of thing, don't let this go to waste. This is something that you can always use uh, in a soup. Okay, you can just chop that up and just use it in the same way that you would celery. So I'm going to take these little pieces that are left here, and I'm going to just cut this into some ribbons. And those ribbons are going to go into my bowl. And then I'm going to make a dressing in which we're going to marinate this dressing. So this is a raw kale salad. And this is something that will keep in your refrigerator for a good week. And you'll have fantastic nutrition, wonderful for your bones, you know, and uh, a nice way to add in some of those antioxidants that we've been talking about. So a couple things that we want to do here. I've juiced um, a Meyer lemon. The Meyer lemon's a little bit different. It's a thin lemon. It's got a very thin skin. And I know they're very popular, you know, in California at this time of the year. You don't see them back east or in the Midwest as much. If you're lucky to get one, you'll get twice as much juice as you would with a typical lemon. If you can't get a Meyer lemon, then you just get what you can. If you can get like a regular um, sun-kissed type lemon, that's what you go for. Whatever lemons you can. There's something great about that lemon juice for marination. So I've just squeezed a lemon into that. And I mean, honestly, you know, lemons are going to vary. So a lemon like that is probably going to give you quite a bit more juice. So you could always use a little bit more if your traditional lemon didn't juice up so much for you. Then I'm going to take a, uh, a garlic clove, and I've already chopped up one in which I've added it to the lemon juice, but I'm going to peel this. And we're going to chop that up real fine. And we're going to put that, get these pieces out of the way. And we're going to just chop up this. So why are we using garlic? I mean, you know, fresh garlic has something in it called allicidin. And allicidin is just has some amazing properties, some of which you probably already know about. We already know about the ability to have garlic maintain the good, healthy uh, bacteria in the gut. But something else that you might not be aware of garlic is that it's fantastic for also uh, decreasing your blood pressure. It's wonderful in terms of decreasing your cholesterol. Some of those antimicrobial, antifungal, antibacterial properties are amazing. So using it raw is great. And then to that, we're going to, uh, we can add a little bit of salt and pepper in just a moment. So. I'm going to go and drizzle what would be about three to four tablespoons of olive oil just right on here. Now you can use uh, an extra virgin olive oil. This is where you know a good olive oil really comes in handy because uh, you've got a little bit more finer taste. Like an extra virgin works really nicely because that uh, more delicate flavor just marries really well with these flavors of the lemon and, uh, and uh, salt and pepper. 
So I'm going to just uh, toss that up here. Okay, so all the oil is just pretty much covering all those greens. And by the way, you know, it, I, I'm going to continue to go ahead and add all of these because this the salad is great. This will stay for the whole week in my refrigerator, so I will continue adding the rest of this. Now I'm going to just take my dressing here, which is just basically my garlic and lemon juice, nothing else. I'm going to just pour that right on top. I'm going to put a little bit of salt, and I've got just some uh, basic sea salt. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grind that up. If you had a little pepper, we could do the same thing here. So we can just grind a little pepper. And the last thing I can do is I didn't have any pomegranate seeds on hand. If you did, that really works great. Remember I was telling you about the principle of when you've got something bitter, even if it's just slightly bitter, Adding something slightly sweet is kind of a nice combination. So I didn't have pomegranate, so what else could I use? Well, today I, I just happened to have about a half of an apple left over. I just squeezed a little bit of lemon on, and I'm just going to put that apple right in here and uh, throw that in. And I'm going to go ahead and just toss this really well so that that lemon juice is going to sit and marinate for about 30 minutes. And as it's marinating, it's just going to break those fibers down. So this is, you know, one of the things that will help that tough texture break down into something that becomes just really easy to chew, and you'll, you're going to love it. Now, the last piece of this salad is it's nice to be able to have a little bit of um, a nice Romano um, hard cheese, like a Pecorino Toscano or a Parmesan. So I'm just going to go ahead and grate this up. All right. Make sure we've got about maybe two-thirds of a cup here. And... And the last part of the salad is just to go ahead and just toss that on. And if you're somebody that's dairy sensitive, of course you could just leave this off. The salad is fantastic without the dairy. So um, the one thing I do find, though, that's really interesting is for many of my clients that have problems with, uh, with dairy, when they go ahead and use raw, the raw milk that's used for here often has, en well, not often, it does have enzymes that make it a lot more easier for you to pre-digest these proteins and without any problems. So many people can handle a raw European cheese who wouldn't be able to go ahead and handle, let's say, an American cheese or a Monterey Jack cheese from, let's say, from their local markets. So bear that in mind for some of you that think you might be sensitive. All right, this salad is basically done. This is a great uh, salad, like I said, to have on hand, and you can keep this in a container and use it for several days. But before I finish, I want to just remind you that if you've got these stems, you know, you can either compost this. If you don't compost, get started. It's a great way to go ahead and put the nutrients back into the soil that are lost. But if you don't, then at least chop it up and consider using that in a soup. That'll work great. Now, one last thing before we finish up. A couple of tips that I wanted to share from, uh, from last week, and that was one of the things that we do that works really well for us is that we take the vegetables that we've purchased for the week and we chop them up and we keep them in a container so they're ready to go. So I had several different peppers and some celery. This becomes something in which I'll just use um, as a snack. I'll take this to work and use that in, you know, maybe with uh, a little bit of hummus or I might just have that as a, just a, a snack on its own. Um, another thing I did this week that might be helpful is I picked up some other greens. Um, sometimes I just buy things that are ready to go. So I just want to share with you. This is something that if you have access to a Trader Joe's, if you can just pull that back, Alan, so people can see that. This is their Southern Greens mix, and it's a combination of mustard, turnip, collards, and spinach. It's cut. It's clean. It's ready to cook. I mean, this is really wonderful for some of you that are looking for you know, an easy way that you can get your greens and you don't want to chop, cut, and peel. I'm going to use this bag with my white beans for tomorrow night. Monday nights at our house are now meatless Mondays. So we're going to be making a soup along with these greens in our crock pot, and I'll show you how that gets done. Um, so stay tuned for that. 
And then the other thing I wanted to share with you is that uh, this week we're going to be focusing on some more starchier carbohydrates and some examples of that are things like your yam, your sweet potatoes, your butternut squash. These have a little bit more calories than your leafier vegetables that grow above the ground or that we use mostly the stems. So things like your cauliflower, your broccoli, your Brussels sprouts, those kinds of vegetables tend to be less starchy than these kind of vegetables. So I'm going to show you some ideas about how to use them this week. One last reminder too is that if you, I picked up some beets this week at the farmer's market and uh, if you've always cooked your beets uh, for years, if you've always cooked them, consider using your beets raw. And I wanted to just show you, you know, how I could make a simple salad here just using some raw beets. So I've got this yoga beet right here, which I'm taking, which has got a beautiful yellow color, which is very unusual, but it's, it's very sweet. So I'm just grating this up. If I had some carrot, I could add carrot to it. That would be fantastic. Put it aside. Now I'm going to take a, just a traditional red beet. Again, beets that are raw are full of enzymes. And many of you, if you can just incorporate some of these raw vegetables in a salad with a meal that might be a little heavier, a meal that might have some chicken or meat or lamb, it's going to help very much provide some of the enzymes to help break those heavier proteins down. So beets are one of those examples. So let's take a look here. I've just got this. All right. So you can see beautiful colors here. Let me go ahead and put that aside. This would be a great way to go ahead and take the vinaigrette that we showed you. You could add a little bit of um, chopped greens or celery um, and just drizzle a little bit of that vinaigrette or the creamy dressing and you've got a great quick salad. It would even look fantastic if you wanted to, just sprinkling a little bit of that on top of this kale salad just to give it a burst of color. Because remember we eat not only our foods you know, for nutrition, we always eat, we also eat with our eyes. And so one of the things that I hope that I can impart to you is how important it is to incorporate more color as a way of creating some sort of dynamic, beautiful art forms on your plate. So I'm going to enjoy some of this Tuscan salad in just a few minutes with my husband. And we're going to have I'm a going to go ahead and have a glass of wine. So cheers to you. And um, it's kind of a nice way to go ahead and end the week. So um, I hope this gives you a little bit of inspiration, and we'll see you next week with some ideas on starchy carbohydrates. Stay tuned.